today I wanted to break the mold and tell you why the best first project to uh, do is your own home if you want to get into interior design. And I think this is kind of funny because this is the way interior designers have always become or gotten into the industry. Like their first kind of step is that they would design their own home, put that energy into it, and then um, they would uh, be able to successfully become interior designers without uh, following a tr what we call now a traditional pathway into the interior design industry, which is going to uh, a school and then uh, getting uh, trying to find a job. Uh, if you're lucky, and then obviously um, progressing up the career ladder that way. But that's not how interior designers have uh, traditionally gotten into the industry. Usually it was they would have a project that was typically their own home, and then they would uh, show that, and that would become their platform or s like where they would spring into the industry. And it's funny because this is something that architects, um, interior designers often do this at the beginning of their careers, but architects do this a little bit later. But it still is the pinnacle point at which people become successful because that is where they use their exemplary project to, um, to show people this is what I can do. So I want to go into a few things about why your home is, your, is the best first project if you want to get into the industry. Um, so let's have a look at them. Firstly, you're going to make mistakes and that in the safety in your own home is absolutely fine. So the worst mistakes you can make are ones that cause financial <laughs> trouble to somebody else typically or even, I mean, we work on in the construction industry, so we can cause other types of problems, delays to projects, uh, even dangerous situations. We can design dangerous things and, um, well, we can co make uh, the project costs escalate. You can practice all of this on your own project without practicing on somebody else's. And I think that's really, really key. Obviously, if you get to work in an office, you might be exposed to these things, but don't think you will be naturally because um, most uh, assistants, for at least for the first few years of an interior design firm when you're working, you don't have anything to do with budgets or um, have any control over those higher level decisions. So you're usually just somebody who's just working in the office doing things like presentations, administrative work, and um, probably drawing um, and calling around to trades. So <laughs> you're doing that as well as the uh, on your own home if you're the one project managing the project. And you're getting to do the boss's job as well as your job. And I think this is really key because you're getting the boss's experience, which is what you need in order to become a successful interior, successful interior designer, not just uh, administrative work, which most people can do. And this is really great um, for uh, people who are straight out of school because they need that practice to speak to people confidently on the phone. Whereas if you're a career changer moving into interiors a little bit later in life, you've got that experience. You know how to speak to people and you're usually a little bit more confident um, in making really clear decisions, which is actually something else that is really, really fantastic when you're working on your own home as an interior designer, which is uh, you can make all the decisions. So you are acting like the boss in the office. And I think that is really key because you would never get that experience anywhere else unless it's on your own for, uh, on your own home, especially as a beginner designer. So making decisions and learning how to make decisions. I think I worked in an architectural office for over 15 years. And when I first started my interiors business, I was real. it took me forever to make a decision because I never had to make the decisions and I could always just palm those off to my boss. Um, I would put options in front of him and that was it um, and the first few clients I had I found it really really difficult because I would be like well no it's your decision <laughs> and they were like no no we're hiring you we've paid you to make the decision for us and it was really hard um, even after 15 years of experience in, a, in high level design firms that I, 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 I had not been exposed to that kind of responsibility. And this is invaluable experience that you get when you work on your own home. So I always had the best jobs 
But it doesn't mean that you learn everything you need to become a successful interior designer when you're working for somebody else. And I had great, uh, great jobs. So um, I think working on your own home is just, it, I mean, for me, when I did it for my own home, it became one of the most eye-opening experiences because when you're working for a client, when you're working for yourself, I actually find it's much harder working for yourself because you've got an abundance of decisions. You actually go through the same things that the client goes through. And yet you have to be, you're the only person that can make the decision. You can't kind of bounce it off the client again. So the responsibility that you get when you design your own home as your first project is really, um, it pushes your education to the next level and really gives you the experience that you need, that you're looking for, that is really rare to get in an office. And um, I think that when uh, I always come back to this idea that, you know, getting, uh, going to school and then getting a job, I don't, I genuinely don't understand why everyone still thinks that that is the best way to become an interior designer because um, that's what I did. <laughs> and uh, it, it wasn't what made me successful. Um, and I still believe, and now I obviously, I mentor others to uh, follow a non-traditional pathway, which when you see the success that those students can get so much faster from um, just doing something that interior designers have done uh, for the whole time that the uh, uh, tradition of that the um, profession has existed, um, it just makes sense that it would work that way. So, what's another thing? Um, uh, you'll if you've heard, I think it's Malcolm Gladwell who wrote the book Outliers. There's this saying that you once you reach ten thousand hours, you become an expert at something. Once you're working on your own home, you'll know what I mean because. Um, you work on it 100% of the time. You do not leave that, that mental space. And I think what's really interesting is when you're an interior designer or any type of designer working on a project, you, you are always, I mean, you're thinking about your designs in the shower, you're thinking about your designs when uh, you're on holidays, you're thinking about it all of the time because it, design doesn't just stop and start. It, it doesn't work that way. Creativity is a little bit more fluid. And so... Um, it's always happening in the back of your mind when you're going for a run, when you're having a conversation, you'll get an idea and you're like, where did that come from? It was like always boiling at the back of your mind, even though you're present in the situation. So uh, it's the amount of hours that you put into your home project uh, or your own project are many, many more than you could ever clock up in an office. And um, so Malcolm Gladwell states that there's this 10,000 hour mark that you reach when you become an expert. And I worked out the hours and I do, if you work on your own home, which you easily clock up hours, you're likely, if you're doing a 90 hour week, which obviously that sounds like a lot. And I used to work in an office for 90 hours a week. So I know how many hours that is. It doesn't feel like that when you're doing it on your own home. I used to work even more hours a week on my own home. Um, obviously outside of work, but um, it was it, it didn't feel like a 90 hour week that I was clocking up. And when you get that much high level experience, so it's not just administration uh, that you're doing at someone's office, it's you're making the decisions on a project, you're managing the project, you're on site, uh, you're getting that really hands on experience. That is the kind of experience that makes you uh, a successful interior designer, that gives you the knowledge that you need in order to um, uh, to become a, a better designer or a, or a skilled designer. And you will clock up those hours a lot faster than you ever will in an office and you ever will on any other project. It's your own project you have a passion for because you have to live with it, which brings me to the next point. You have to live with the design decisions that you've made. So you experience things like the quality of something when you hold it in your hands. Obviously, you do this when you're in an office as well, but it's different because when you experience the length of time with things like door handles, when you open that door handle every single day, you feel the weight of the door handle, you know how it sounds, how it feels, how it looks, how the pattern ages over time, how all of these things make 
uh, help you make better decisions as an interior designer. So the comfort of things. Obviously, we're obviously asked so many times to provide furniture for uh, an interior and your clients will expect it to not only be functional but comfortable so and and visually <laughs> appropriate for the situation so and physically being able to interact with things and test ideas is so much more fluid and flexible and less under pressure than you ever would be in an office and I think this is where refining your um, I, in terms of quality, really comes into its own because I worked, I designed uh, international high luxury hotels. Then I worked on luxury high end properties in London and overseas. And now I look back and I still don't think. I knew what was luxury, but now I know on a different level because there are certain things that um, you can gain. And it took me 15 years to get to that point where I could really, really uh, start to see luxury. But now having really focused on my own home project, I can see how much more I can learn and how much faster that you can condense your, um, your learning. Whereas I had to do it on projects and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects over all those years. You have one project where you can learn all of this stuff. It's just priceless. <laughs> so there's, uh, I mean, it's tried and tested way of becoming an interior designer. And I really believe that it is the best way to get started in the, in, in the industry. So what else? You've got, um, you get clear on things that you like and you don't like, which is really, really important when you're, um, especially as an interior designer who was trained um, uh, university trained, you're, you're, you've got skills, you've got all of the skills, you learn everything and so you can do anything for everybody. But is that really what you should be doing? Because um, anyone who knows anything about marketing knows that when you're doing everything for everybody, you're doing nothing for nobody. And when you form an opinion about interior design, you're really clear about the direction you want to head in, you do that naturally when you're working on your own project because you're making style decisions. The, uh, the end result, which you end up having a portfolio with anyway, um, is uh, the combination of all of your ideas all coming together and you can see it as its final result. So um, knowing what you like and don't like, I think is a really, really important one because you will be um, pushed to make a decision and which leads me to the next one which is making decisions is something you usually reserved for the boss um, and that is something that you will naturally have to do for yourself and deal with the consequences what's another thing you'll uh, end up uh, meeting lots of trades so the trade contacts that you make while you're working on your own project, you will know straight away whether you'll work with them ever again, um, the quality of their work, what they were like to work with as a client, and then again, when you, whether you trust them on uh, to to um, to use them again on another project. Um, something that you would l not likely ever get experience in on as an interior designer working for somebody else is project management um uh i'll do um, i'm working on another uh post about uh the differences between project management construction project management and a project procurement which i think most people get a little bit confused about because they all think it's the one same thing um it's not and uh a lot of interior designers think that they can do construction project management or contract administration when they shouldn't be um, and because they have no experience in it. Whereas if you're doing this on your own project, you, you're getting first-hand experience that you would obviously never get anywhere else. And it's obviously so litigious um, and so many things that go wrong because you need to understand contracts. When you're working with somebody face-to-face, -face, the builder, you've got that contract in front of you and you've studied it because you um, you know it better than anyone else because uh, you want to make sure that uh, everything goes according to plan. 
it's first-hand learning, first-hand experience, especially if you're the one project managing uh, your own project. And uh, funnily enough, most people do because they they think it's the the most affordable way to finish their project and that experience is really priceless because only the uh the most experienced ex- interior designers in an office will ever get that position so you've already jumped um your your pay scale you've also jumped your experience scale by taking on that position um and the experience is invaluable because again you've tested it on your own project the the liability is likely very very low because the um, uh, implications of any mistakes aren't harmful to other people. Another thing is that you automatically get a portfolio, which is why you know that um, uh, Amber Lewis's, the Shea McGee's, the Athena Calderones. This is why they had uh, social media. Uh, to use to gain success because they had something to show. They had the time to play with it. They had a finished portfolio that they could play with and present every day. And that's something that most interior designers just don't have, especially if they come straight out of school. I mentioned the the poor portfolios. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just really, um, uh, it's quite sad because it's one of the, the problems that, interior designers have when they're just starting out thinking well I have nothing to post and you need to post in order to be seen so for, so that people can find you whether that's writing a blog whether that is posting to social media whether that is just having an account and being there and letting people know that you're you're actually a, a very current functioning business people will look for social media it's the world we live in so be having something to post and feeling confident with that is um, a really, really, really key, which I suppose leads me um, to the final point, which is the project satisfaction and the confidence you will grow and gain from doing your own project is priceless. Undertaking a project from start to finish, which again in an office is very unlikely that you'll get that experience, especially if it's a big project. Um, I remember working uh, five years in an office, I only finished two projects from start to finish because those projects took years, absolute years. So obviously I was in, um, involved in a lot more projects, but it wasn't until um, I finally finished a project from start to finish that I really, really felt that project satisfaction and understood how a project was meant to be run. And when you're, it, no matter how long your project takes, which, you know, if it is a big house project, it might take two years. And that is a, a typical um, a, amount of time a, a full refurbishment of a property will take. And it's, it helps you gain confidence because you've done it. You understand the ins and outs, what's required from start to finish. That confidence you gain is, it, it cannot, you, you can't, uh, compare it to anything else. I was, even after working, and I, I was always really confident with my projects because um, I was, uh, I was always a top designer when in my courses. I was always a um, uh, someone who was always hired without any problems. So I always had great positions, really uh, positions that other people fought for, and the confidence I had as a designer was one thing, but the confidence I gained after working on my own project and really understanding the ins and outs and also being able to make high level decisions like those ones that the boss would typically make, nothing compared to that kind of confidence. And you get that naturally by working on your own project. So to finish up, I think it's, I think it's interesting as, as a topic to think that we we're all told that there's this particular route that we should take into the industry and yet it it might not be the right route into the industry for you and I think this is um, uh, it's a broader topic because education is we're being pushed for university studies and this is just something you I mean these days people just naturally think that that is the next path straight out of school when it really doesn't have to be um, it is for some people and probably should be for others, but it isn't necessarily required for interior design as we have proved for 
many, many years um, and with many, many uh, designers who are out successfully working today who use their own home as their first project and uh, made it big. So I just wanted to finish off by saying if you are working on your own project and you are considering becoming an interior designer, you're doing the right thing to, uh, in, to make those first steps into the industry. Don't feel like you uh, haven't done things the right way because uh, you actually have done things the right way. There is no right or wrong, but um, this is one way. And it's one very, very good way, and in my opinion, the best way to become an interior designer. So... I'm Jo Crowback. I'm an architectural and interior designer, and I run the uh, a mentorship program at the Interior Designers Business School for people who want to start careers in interior design.